Hi, folks. This is my, my third attempt to make a recording of uh, my drush for Shabbat. First one uh, in a format that didn't seem to work. Second one, I got phone calls in the middle. Right now, I think I have vacuum cleaning going on above my head, but I'm just going to muddle through, as we all do. And I want to take some time with you to, uh, to look at a message, or to hear a message, and to con consider a message from this week's parasha that I think talks to our moment. And that has to do with how we respond to situations of uncertainty. And so let's take a look at the text, the text that uh, we'll be analyzing for a few minutes. It's this, it's the opening of the story of the golden calf. And it reads as follows. And the people saw that Moshe delayed coming down from the mountain. And the people gathered up upon Aaron by Yimrelav, and they said to him, Kumas Elano Elohim, arise and make for us a goddess, which will go before us. Because Moshe, this Moshe, the man, who brought us forth from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has befallen him. That's the story that leads to the golden calf being created. And what is the story about? Um, the Torah seems to tell us it emerges from lo yadanu. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. And it leads to a panic and a frenzy. In this case, what was it that they don't know? Uh, Moshe, what has happened to you, Moshe, they wonder, because he's delayed. And what's the source of that conclusion that Moshe is delayed? The Ibn Ezra seems to come from an approach which I think reads properly in the in Mishpatim. People actually were never told a time that Moshe would be back. But it's been 40 days, and there isn't a Moshe, and finally people say, it ain't going to happen. As Ibn Ezra reads it, they look and they see that every day they're surviving only because they have man and mayim. They have, they have manna from heaven that provides them food in the unforgiving uh, territory they're in water that comes from a special well, and they conclude Moshe can't have survived up on that mountain. Probably after two, three days, he probably couldn't have survived without food and water. Uh, but now it's 40, and Moshe must not be alive. That's their conclusion. And they, and they turn to Moshe, to Aaron, and say, make us a new God that'll take us out of Egypt. Excuse me, that will take us um, through the wilderness into the land of Israel. Midrash chooses a different reading. And the Midrash uh, notes the unusual word that's used for delay. We would usually expect to see uh, the word echar, as in by echar, ata, I was delayed until now, another pasuk in the Torah. That's a normal word for, uh, for delaying. Boshesh is not an unusual word. It appears a few points in the Tanakh, and they, that's how they derive and understand the translation. But why were the Torah, what is the Torah hinting at by telling us, we use the word, using the word boshesh? So the Midrash says that in, we should darshan it, we should interpret it as ba-shesh. The sixth hour, midday, noon had arrived, and there wasn't a Moshe. And according to the Midrash, Moshe had told them upon ascending to the mountain, I'll be back in 40 days, presumably at high noon. And he's not there. And the people look at their watches or look at the sky and see that it's midday, and immediately, immediately, they turn into a panic. Forty days they've been waiting, of course. And now where is he? He's not coming. He's not coming. So instead of concluding, of course, maybe he's delayed, it can take a little bit of time, but just calm down. Maybe he tripped. Got to come down the mountain with these tablets, give him a little bit they go right to Aaron and they make demands. And according to the other Midrashim, Chor, who Moshe put in charge with Aaron in Mishpatim, is not in the story. And the Midrash says they kill him immediately in their panic and their frenzy. And they turn, turn to Aaron to make these demands. And that's why Aaron reads what's happening here and says, I'm going to have to play along with this, at least for now. We figure out what's going on. That is, uh, that's, what's going, that's what's happening here. Now, where does this frenzy come from? One Midrashic read says that it's the Satan, it's Satan, who has produced an image of Moshe on a, on, dead on a funerary bier up in heaven. And that's why the Torah uses the word zeh 
the midrashic, uh, as we've talked about often in class, in, 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 in shul, ze is interpreted by the rabbis to always mean you're pointing to something. Ze Moshe Ha'ish, this man Moshe, who brought us that, we don't know what happened to him. They look up at the sky at that image of a dead Moshe, and they're all, and they're in their panic, and that makes, yeah, once you have a, that image, of course you would panic, I guess. Others interpreted that, that it's, it's the it's the error of rabbits. That's that's the mixed multitude that's done this. But I would leave it for us, and have us consider: there isn't a satan involved here. It's people who are in a in a moment of deep uncertainty and angst, and worry, that allow themselves to 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 turn that into a panic and into a frenzy and into a mob of terrible decisions and actions. All that ensues um, with with horrifying, horrible consequences for the Jewish people. I've been thinking about this a lot these past few days, and um, I think it talks to us right now in a moment in which all of us find ourselves, this whole world finds itself, and how we uh, we react and respond to terribly uh, a, ter a terrible virus and so many unknowns that are before us. And there are two choices: one is a panic, and the answer is panic is bad, and the other is, uh, is to gather yourself, to gather ourselves and make wise decisions. So as a community, I think we have done so. The country is making its decisions that it needs to make, but we can only make decisions as a community. I think we've been making wise decisions. We've made decisions um, as a shul uh, before Purim to, uh, to shut down, and that was a hard decision to do, but it was the right one because of some cases that we have already shared with you. And as a community, as an Orthodox community, uh, we follow, we, we, we've taken the, 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 taken the decision on the heels of the decision in, in Teaneck, New Jersey, in Bergen County, and others as well now, that all of our Orthodox schools will be shuttered for now. Doesn't mean forever, folks, but it's for now, and we'll figure out what for now means, just to help slow the speed of, of, of uh, a terrible contagion that is out there and that our community has found itself very much in the center of, and to help slow things down and get a, get a handle on it, uh, we're just not coming together to accomplish, in order to accomplish that. And that's, I think, the wise choice and the halakhically correct choice to be making. But put that aside for now and talk about ourselves and how, uh, how we're doing, how you're doing, how I'm doing. And I think that we, we, we can find ourselves, it's very possible that in, in, in the moment, if we're quarantined at home or self-quarantined at home or just choosing to stay home um, right now, uh, we, we, everything depends on how we respond to the unknowns in front of us. It's a teaching that I learned from Susie a long time ago. I know she teaches, she teaches in, her, uh, in, in, in her classes and works with people as well. The things that are beyond our control, we can't control, but we can control how we respond to them. Uh, Natan Sharansky said pretty much the same thing yesterday on a, on a call with, uh, with our local school, with Westchester Day School and others who were involved in that call and described many, many years, many years in, uh, in the gulag and in prison, much longer quarantine than, than we're in um, if, or, or a closure that we've had so far. And he made the case that, you know, at some point you realize first, yeah, life got put on hold, my big dreams and where I thought it was making a difference, that suddenly changed in an instant. Uh, and there's so many things that are beyond my control that, that I cannot control. Um, so what will it be? Do I, do, I, do, I, do I allow my head to be there? Or do I say, okay, what will I do with myself for myself now? Who will I be? What will I make of myself? For him, he worked on his brain and his heart and his mind playing chess over and over again, but thinking about important things. I can't imagine his situation as well. most of us can. You can read his book, which is quite uh, moving. But for us, as we're in our homes right now, we have that choice, that choice that we can make, uh, how we respond to things. And, the, and, and, I, and I offer the prayer that we make the, 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 cho the, the choice that says, okay, I'm here with my family. What can my family life be like, even in tense moments? Taking the deep breaths and saying, this is a bracha to be with these people who are mine, who I love, uh, and who hopefully, I, and, I, and love me. Um, and what will that be like? And if we're on our own, not anyone in our home, that to, 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 uh, to be thinking about the ways we can grow ourselves. Um, as he mentioned, write your book. 
or, or do other things, do other important um, uh, other self work that we can we can do at this time. And thankfully, we have ways in which, even though we are not necessarily physically together with lots of other people, we can connect virtually by the phone through this Zoom, and we'll be continuing to do this. We'll have a tefillah later this afternoon before Shabbat. I hope you'll be on that uh, tefillah uh, Zoom with us. And Motzei Shabbat, Motzei Shabbos uh, Havdalah we'll be doing in classes that are starting up next week as well. There are ways in which we can connect that way and so many other ways. Um, how we respond to the unknowns is what we have to make a choice about now. And I give us the bracha that we be able to respond in the right way. That a Shabbos will descend in a number of hours. We will allow the blessings and the peace of Shabbat to descend upon us and allow ourselves to be and to grow and to plan and to, uh, and to, and to help and to, to flourish, to flourish even in these moments. That will be the right lesson learned of a story long ago. Wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom and, uh, and, and special time together.